Today here we have Johan and um, shooting this video because he's dealing with two really frustrating conditions and those of you that are watching this probably have one of the two. We've done videos of other people like him that have costochondritis, chest pain, also called Tietz syndrome, and hiatal hernia or hiatus hernia, sliding type 1 hernia. Both of these conditions are really frustrating to get a proper diagnosis, especially the costochondritis because there are no tests that show that you have it, none. There are tests that rule it out, like EKGs, stress tests, and he's had how many? I had an EKG uh, several times just because I had to run to the hospital thinking it was a heart-related condition, and it turned out that my heart was fine. Yeah. They couldn't really rule out what, what it was. Well, they certainly ruled out the heart condition with the EKG, the right. stress test. He's had several of them, and this is common. And you guys are all nodding your head watching this from your home or your cell phones, you're, you're nodding your head, yep, I've been through that. So if you've already had all those tests done and you're still having a chest pain that gets worse with activity, typically, not always though, it could even be sleeping on your side that could aggravate it, go see a physical therapist, but better yet a chiropractor, because physical therapy can deal with the soft tissue, but not the spinal and the rib misalignment. So we're on visit number three today, and his chest pain is much better, right? Has improved. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're not there yet, but it's, you know, he's been dealing with this a long time. It's not gonna, we're not gonna fix it overnight. A lot of people ask, how long does it take to fix? Every case is different. In some cases we have to use cold laser therapy if it's a real severe case. And if we have to, you know, if he gets 70% improvement in that other 30% we need to use laser, we will at that point. But we're only on treatment number three. He also is dealing with a hiatal hernia, which is really frustrating. Not so much to get it diagnosed, but it can be because endoscopies, barium swallows can come back negative or false negatives. Very common to see that, especially if the hernia is really small. So that can be frustrating. He has really bad acid reflux and he has H. pylori as well. He's had some really interesting side effects though. You know, when he eats, he gets headaches some strange side effects. He had tremors in his hands and fingers. That's gone. That's gone. That was coming from his neck. Nerve supply to the hands and fingers comes from the neck. So as soon as we cleared that out, I think that was instantaneous after one visit. Yeah. The panic attacks, the anxiety is, is better, yes. but we as we start to improve the chest pain, the costochondritis, that will improve. The next step is the hiatal hernia, and he still has acid reflux, right? Yes. Is it as severe not as, as it, much? Not, not as, as much. much. Okay, so a little bit of change in the acid reflux. So we know we're headed in the right direction uh, with the hiatal hernia maneuver and with the costochondritis, the adjusting of the chest wall through the ribs and the thoracic spine. So let's go ahead, have you start on your stomach. So he has H. pylori, and that has to be addressed when dealing with the hiatal hernia. So normally they put you on uh, antibiotics, but he had a really rare and severe reaction to antibiotics, I can relate to that. I ended up in the hospital after taking one pill of doxycycline for a little surgical procedure I had to remove a cyst on my scalp. And that one pill, within about 12 to 15 hours, I had these huge blisters. I had something called erythema multiform. It's a rare condition. And so I can relate to the severe side effects from antibiotics. Uh, and then not to mention all the other hidden side effects that you just don't know about what it does to your gut flora and your stomach. We won't get into that. Do you remember what the antibiotic was that you had? Don't remember. Let's be honest. It wasn't doxycycline, was it? Been Probably been. not because I think they, I don't think they give that typically for H. pylori. But uh, he had a, such a severe reaction, he started seeing things and hearing things, right? Hallucinating? Yeah, hallucinations. Hallucinations. So anxiety. Yeah, which is really rare. Luckily, the doc took him off of it right away. But we still have to deal with the H. pylori, so he's gonna get tested to see if that's gone. And if not, we may have to switch him to another antibiotic. And that, the other ones, a lot of them have penicillin in it, and he is allergic to penicillin. You should get the name of that antibiotic because you can't take that again. So you should have that as a list of, of everything you're allergic to, along with penicillin. But 
make sure you get the name of that antibiotic that you took so you can kind of stick it in the back of your head and remember that for future references, okay? And obviously I remember doxycycline because I was hospitalized for it and if I take it again, it could be much worse, my reaction. So we're gonna loosen up the thoracic uh, muscles here, the paraspinal muscles, which the ribs run underneath, okay? And as we loosen that up and then adjust the thoracic spine, that's gonna free up the ribs for proper alignment. Do you do carpentry work? Yeah, I'm in the construction industry, so yeah. So he does a lot of heavy labor, construction, carpentry work, tough on the back, tough on the musculoskeletal system. Notice I'm using this machine, but we use a lot of different tools to address soft tissue uh, tension. Um, and next time I see him, we're gonna do some cupping therapy. We'll do mix it up, do a little bit of graft and, and see what tends to work best for him. A lot of you guys have these at home, the Theraguns, they sell all these over-the-counter ones. It's fine to use, uh, make sure somebody's helping you, you can't do this yourself. And the Theragun or the over-the-counter ones are not going to be as strong as this device. You need a license, a medical license for this, so it is a little bit intense. You okay there? Yep. Okay. Alright, take a deep breath in and go out. Have you had any headaches? Since yes. I last saw you. Yes. Okay. Not constant, but yes. Okay. And yeah, go ahead and take a deep breath in. And go all the way out. And a deep breath in again. And blow out. On the other end of that are your ribs. You're spreading the sternum right at the nipple line there. So if you were having any chest pain at that level. Okay. Turn over on your back. The ribs, again, emanate from the spine. When they come up around, they, they actually come, they slant upward a little bit. The ones down here slant downward a little bit, okay? So the angle is slight. All right, cross your arms in front of you. Tuck your chin, take a deep breath in. And blow all the way out. And some of you might think we're brothers. We're not, no relation here. I know we're gonna get some comments below on that. He is not a paid actor. He's a real person, real patient, okay? I want you to bend your knees for me. Although I wish I had somebody in the family that was a contractor, because um, I am not handy at all. Hands up in the air. to fix the stuff right to the center, right at the xiphoid process, right below the, the ribs there. Just off to the left, about half inch, not even, okay? And today we're gonna get in there a little deeper, so just relax, breathe in and out. Now with Johan, we don't need to adjust the ribs from the front the thoracic adjustment and the rib head adjustment from the back has been enough so far, but if as the week goes on, week two goes on and he's plateauing or just not improving and still having chest pain, at that point then I, I will go and start adjusting the ribs from the front at the costo-sternal junction. So some of you probably have tried to do this at home. You can. You're not gonna get in there quite like I do or like someone else can. So what I'm trying to do is get underneath the rib a little bit, right? So we go here, and then once I'm able to feel and grasp onto the stomach, I then do like a scooping motion, scoop it out from underneath the rib and then slide it down. I'm using easily 15 pounds of pressure right here. Sometimes we have to use more for some patients, it just depends on how much they're guarding me, how much they're tightening up the abdominal wall. Did you hear that, Johan? Yeah. That gurgling? I did. Yeah. That's the stomach pulling down. Now, if it's not improving and you're doing that, you might not be on the stomach. Some people have it right here in the middle. Some, most people have it just off to the left. And we had a gentleman in here earlier today who has situs inversus where his organs are switched, 
completely on the opposite side of mirror image. So for him, it's on the right side. But if you're not getting results slightly off to the left of center, then uh, certainly try it right in the center. And it's probably just that you're, you're not on the stomach, you're missing it. Or you're just not able to get deep enough. And again, it's very hard to do on your own but it can't hurt to try. And one more here. And you were getting acid reflux daily, right? Yeah, on a daily basis. Yeah. Whatever you eat. Right after I eat. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get them comfortable enough for the 4th of July that we can have some barbecue and not suffer the consequences afterwards and maybe even wash that barbecue down with a nice cerveza. Doesn't that sound good? I want to get you to that point where you don't even have to think about acid reflux after having a meal like that, okay? All right, relax your arms. Now we're going to check the uh, vagus nerve supply here at C3 through C5 in his neck. He is Subluxated there, we're gonna correct that. Relax yourself. This is also gonna help with your headaches, okay? Okay, now stand up and face this way here. Now I'm going to show you, um, I think I showed you this costochondritis stretch where you raise the arm up all the way up. Did I show you that one yet? I'm not sure. Okay. I don't think so. So you can do, you can do this two ways, folks. You can take your hand, take the finger pads and you're doing a tissue pull. You're not digging in with your fingernails. You're doing that. Yep. Pull it down and then raise that arm up. Yep. And drop it down. And then you're going to do another tissue pull while the arm is down down and then go ahead easier when you when you don't have that extra so you know you got to use a little bit of elbow grease with this hand yep and then raise it up yeah this is one of my favorite stretches for costal kind of race and you can even go underneath and tissue pull go ahead yeah if you do three to five of these strokes on each side or if it's just painful on one side three to five strokes once or twice a day, that's gonna make a big difference for you, okay? Uh, especially during the day when you're working, you're active. Imagine being a contractor and you're in pain all the time and that's having a heavy labor job and not and just being in pain, that's tough. So what you can also do is this. This has got a little bit of a grippy feeling to it. Hold on to that and then do the same thing. It's almost better, isn't it? It's easier, you don't have to use so much. Yeah, you don't have to use as much arm strength. Right, yeah. yeah. I would do it with a shirt on though. Yep. yep. You can even roll, put the ball in here and kind of roll against the, on the floor with your arm up, up here. But I don't see the need to do that. I think this is just fine. Yeah. There you go. So we'll give you a lacrosse ball uh, you can take home today. All right. Great. All right. Thanks for tubing in and thanks for letting us uh, Thank you. show what you're going through. I know a lot of you out there are, are going through hiatal hernias, costochondritis. You feel hopeless. Both conditions are really difficult. Put yourself in his shoes. He's got both. Most of you who are watching this don't have both conditions. There is hope. You're going to get through this. You just need to get to the right person to help you. Okay? Make sure you check out the videos we did on three stretches, my favorite stretches for costochondritis, and then also exercises for hiatal hernia. We've done videos on both of those. Those are not going to fix it necessarily, but it's certainly going to help you deal with a lot of the day, uh, daily pain and managing it from day to day. Some of you may need a little bit more care adjusting or sliding the hiatal hernia down, but certainly you can get started with those stretches. Thanks for tubing in. Thank you guys so much. If you got anything from this video, or even if you just like this view of the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building, give me a like and Get to subscribe. Appreciate you guys.